how's it going everybody this is always back with another video on the channel so for the past week or so i have been creating videos on apple silicon m1 based macbook pro air and mac mini and in those videos the most frequently asked question was about docker support now without wasting time i'm going to tell you that docker is not officially supported on this ship but I've read a blog post which says that Docker team is working on to bring the Docker support to these Apple Silicon M1 chips. And this is a great news, but people want to switch to these computers. They want to make sure their Docker stuff runs. So if you're concerned about Docker and its support, it is not supported yet, but there is a workaround that I think is good enough to actually switch to these machines. Now I want to talk about how you can work with Docker on these machines. Workflow you might not be aware of, well that's called remote development. I'm going to show you a little computer which I use for all my development. Okay, so that is a Raspberry Pi. That's what I use for all my development. The spec on that is four core processor plus four gigabyte of RAM. I do node development on that, Python development on that. Also run Docker. Now the reason for that is I have uh, many different types of computers and I switch between computers all the time. And to maintain my work, which is actually a development, uh, I don't want to switch to a computer and install everything and set up everything. What I do is I set up everything on a Raspberry Pi which is accessible on the, my private network and when I switch to any computer I basically SSH into it and then start development. I know you might be shocked, hey are you going to use Wim to do the development? No, I'm not saying that. In Real Studio Code, which I'm not really a big fan of, I use JetBrains, but recently I found out the remote development plugin provided by VS Code. That actually made me switch to Real Studio Code for some of my development, which I do on Raspberry Pi now. And I recently started using Raspberry Pi as my development machine. Now I'm gonna be showing you how I do that. All you need to do is set up your Raspberry Pi, install whatever you need, and then I'll show you how you can use a Visual Studio code to actually do the remote development. Also, you can debug. So the Visual code that you will see on M1, it basically have everything. It will feel like it's, it's like, you know, running locally on M1. Also, it will have a Docker support as well. So anything that I'm running on Raspberry Pi, I can work with them. So I'm going to open a Visual Studio code. Also, I'm going to open the terminal and I'm going to zoom in a bit and I'm going to do SSH Ubuntu at 192.168.1.113. I type the password and I am able to SSH into Raspberry Pi, which is running Ubuntu operating system. And I pretty much have all the development and repositories cloned to this machine. You can modify these files using Wim. It's not gonna be easy. In Real Studio Code, one thing you need to do is go to extension, tab and search for remote development. I've already installed that extension, which installed these three extensions. So remote SSH, remote container, and remote WSL. Because I've installed it, what I can do now is I can go to command palette and then do connect to host. And that will give me, uh, because I've already connected once, so that's why it's giving me a suggestion. You can go and add a new SSH host. I'm gonna select the one that I've already selected and it will give me a new window. I'm going to close this window and in this window, I have the password. And once I type the password, as you can see at the bottom, it says SSH192.168.1.113, uh, which means I'm actually connected to Raspberry Pi right now to make you believe if I click on open folder you will notice it is actually you know giving me this uh, Ubuntu file system so I can go dev slash I'm gonna open one project and I'm going to click OK now this is going to open VL Studio code with pretty much all the uh, capabilities that you have with VL Studio code like debugging if you run it locally 
right now I'm running it remotely and everything is just, you know, work like it's running locally, but it's not. So I want to work with Docker by using this M1 machine. So what I can do is go to extension pack and search for a Docker plugin. Okay, and that's what I have. I've already installed that. As you can see this icon here as well. Now, once I click on that, it will show me all of these containers and images that I have. So basically this $80 computer is allowing me to use Docker uh, with this M1 MacBook Air. <laughs> so I don't really need to install Docker. I mean, I should not be installing Docker directly on my computer anyway. The reason why people use Docker is, is one of the reasons actually is to keep the machine clean and run everything in a Docker container. So if they don't like it, they could just uninstall that, right? So why not you just buy $80? Uh, if you can afford a MacBook with M1, then I think you can spend $60, $50 on Raspberry Pi or any Windows computer, any old Windows computer that you can install Ubuntu and just, you know, SSH into it and do all your development in Linux, you know, and you can use Docker there. So now this is the container that I need uh, for this project. So I'm just going to stop that. I can start the container, uh, images, and here's a Mongo that I wanna run. So I can right click, right click, and I just say run, and I will execute the command in a Raspberry Pi and I can access it right here. So basically it's running there, but it's, it's making me a feeling of like it's running locally. I can pull images, I can you know, do whatever. It's just, it's just the same thing that you run on local. Uh, Mongo is running in Docker. Do a command here, npm debug. I'll use this npm script. And you will notice that I can actually run my code on Raspberry Pi and then debug that directly on a Mac computer. So this way, it basically allows me to keep my machine clean and I can basically switch to any computer. Like if I want to switch to my MacBook Pro 16 inch or a Windows computer or iMac or whatever it is, I have all the environment set up already. All I need is Visual Studio Code and one extension pack that's it i think this workflow is really great i i believe the do development machine should be like you know either in the cloud or something like you know a little computer running on your network and you could you know do all your development there and keep your personal machine clean um yeah so the code is running i can see the debugger there as well uh send a request and there we go, the debugger triggered. All right guys, I hope this video helped and uh, you have less worry about Docker running on M1 chip now. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Cheers.